three with the M to the fifth. Four, good, good. All right. So, it, I mean, that two has an exponent. That two has an exponent, right? Those are still considered like bases. So two, we can write it as two squared. Add those exponents, and then m to the fifth. But if we ever have, and this is what I said at the beginning, we want coefficients to be simplified. Um, we don't write. We usually don't write coefficients to have exponents like that, um, unless they're like ridiculously big. Um, do the next one. Do two. Do two. What do we get here? Two M. Okay. So because there's so with coefficients, we multiply one and two, right? Get two. And if they're like bases for our variables M, we add the four and the negative three and we get one, right? So two M. Uh do number six. All right, so this is this is the answer, right? Okay, so some of you got this. Zero right there. Oh, sorry. You got that? Yeah. Okay, so you either said four x squared or four x squared y zero. Yeah. And what's y to the zero though? Y to the zero is one. So when I say whenever I multiply by y to the zero or anything to the zero, I'm essentially saying multiplying by one. Which when we multiply something by one, we usually don't write multiply by one, right? Okay. I I would be I don't know what like if I were to give you uh tomorrow a question that asks you to do that and you write y to the zero in math Excel, I don't know what it would do. It probably would tell you to simplify it. Yeah. You don't put y to the zero. Right. If one topping pizza costs five dollars, two topping pizza costs seven dollars. Each topping is four dollars and ninety-two cents, and yeah, yeah. Do question eight. All right, so what's the, what's the coefficient? Four. V to the fourth? U squared, all right. Do number number nine. All right, so we agree that 12 is the coefficient. Four times three, right? Okay. Now, how did uh, how'd you guys go about this? Okay, okay. So you you went ahead and you multiplied a to the third and a to the negative fourth, right? What that give you? A to the negative one. Okay. Uh, so then you went to the b's and you got b to the b to the negative one. Okay. So, so far, so good. But do we like negative exponents? No. So, the th so when we have negative exponents, that is automatically going to generate a fraction. And then you've got to put the wherever the negative ones occurred, if they occurred in the top, they go to the bottom. If they occurred in the bottom, they go to the top. So, A to the negative 1 is occurring. So, so when I say the top, so because there's no fraction here, right? It can always be written over 1, though, right? So then now there is a top and a bottom. So 12, what's the exponent for 12? It's 1, so it stays put. Exponent for A is negative 1, so it goes down to the bottom and becomes positive. And then B is negative up there, so it goes to the bottom and becomes positive. Okay? So that's an option. That's one way of doing it. Some people... We'll say, I don't like to deal with that right away. I don't like to deal with my negatives right away. Because these, these approaches, sometimes some of these properties are independent of one another, meaning that the order doesn't matter. Okay? So if I do this, if I go 4A cubed B squared, 
Okay, those stay up top because they are positive exponents. Times three because that's a positive exponent of one, right? And then can I put A to the fourth here and B to the third there? Does that make sense? Because now they're nice. So now I can do the top. That, that gives me my 12. A cubed B squared. Bottom gives me A to the fourth, B to the third. And now can we do the canceling? That those three are going to cancel with three of those. Those two are going to cancel with two of those. Leaves me the same 12 over AB. Does that kind of make sense? So you have choices. Um, and I don't want to pigeonhole you into saying you have to multiply them and add them first and then move them down in the denominator. Okay, I want to give you options, whatever makes sense to you. Um, do number 12. Wait, for, what's, what's number 11? Yeah, but what do I do with those two? Now, it's a power to a power. So I change that to x to the... Remember what we do with power to powers? Yeah. You multiply them. So it gives you x to the 0, which is 1. And give 12 a shot on your own. What is the exponent for the 2 right here? This is something that a lot of people miss. Yeah, this 2, this coefficient has an exponent of 1. That's, that's necessary for the problem. All right. So we got power. We got a product in here, right? 2 times x squared, right? That's a product. We have a product raised to a power. Do we remember what we do with that power of negative 4? Uh, so you okay? You could do. Let, let, I'm gonna. I'll come back to that. You're right. You could do it that way. Let's do this because this is the way that it's usually introduced in textbooks. Is that if you have a power to a power, like the last one we did, we had a power to a power, so we multiplied these, right? Okay. Now we have a product raised to a power. So instead of just multiplying the one thing. You're going to multiply, I'm going to talk about like distributing that to those exponents. So you're going to rewrite this as 2, now 1 times negative 4 gives me negative 4, and then x, and then 2 times negative 4 gives me negative 8, correct? Okay. So is that a fraction if I put it over 1? Okay. Do I like negative exponents? So this one's going to go to the bottom. It's going to become 2 to the fourth. This one's going to go to the bottom. So it gives me x to the eighth, right? What's left up top? Yeah, i got to keep a 1 up there. Okay. Uh, now, generally, like on your like tests or quizzes or whatever, 2 to the fourth, they would probably want that to turn into 16. Okay, but if they, if you were, like, tomorrow, give you a quiz tomorrow, if you put two to the fourth in, it's right, comes back, you, you, you review your quiz, it says you got this wrong because you wanted 16 x to tell me, I'll give you points for it. Does that make sense? Uh, I, I know that that's, a, that's something people overlook every once in a while. So, uh, now, there's an alter, alternative way, and I think this is what Jenna was getting at. We can actually do this. We can say that we've got... Uh, let's just say, like, 2x squared. I don't know if this is the... Like, what if I had... Like, what if I had u to the negative fourth? How would you write that? Okay. You'd write it that way, right? Let's say that u was this thing right there. Let's, let's make a substitution. Okay, so can I take... This thing here, that is 2x squared to the negative fourth. Does it make, if that was you, you would put that in the bottom like that, correct? Does that make sense? Can you now then take that and distribute it to those exponents? And you get 1 over 2 to the fourth and x to the eighth. So you have options there. Those are independent, or independent properties or rules.
Question 19. Usually let you use your notes, huh? Question 19. No, how many questions are on the quiz? Yep. I have an actual question. All of them. Yeah, it is a question. How many questions are on the quiz? All of them. I have an actual question. Like, why would I make a quiz that not all the questions are on it? That doesn't make sense. All right, so 19, what am I going to do? What is the exponent with this 2? 1. So what am I going to do with that negative 1 right now? Okay, okay good. So it's going to be 2 to the negative 1 now, right? So I take that and I distribute it to that 1. Then we go x and we distribute it to that 4. And then we distribute it to this negative 3, right? What's a negative times negative? Positive. Okay, I'm a fan, there are, op you do have options with this negative one here, but I'm a fan, and we have options kind of like the last question, I'm a fan of distributing first, okay, doing that power to power first, and rewriting it this way. That's not the answer yet, because what do we don't, what don't we like? The negative exponent, so I, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go look at each term, and say, okay, if it's negative, it needs moved, if it's positive, it stays. So that's negative, so it moves, right? That's negative, so it moves. Positive, right? So positive stays. We get y cubed over 2x to the fourth. Is that good? Twenty six. It might it might very well be. No, it's like if you could do the ones we just did, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to do twenty six. My my suggestion before you do anything on twenty six may get I I would get rid of negative exponents. Okay, I'll get rid of negative exponents first. All right, so like I said, I, I think it makes sense to go through and look at all the exponents first. Okay, so that one's positive, right? So it stays. That one's positive, right? So it stays. So 2x to the fourth. What do we do with that one? You put down the bottom. Okay, now the order that doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay, so it goes anywhere on the bottom. What about this one? It goes on the bottom. Okay, then I'm going to go through the bottom. What about that one? What about that three? Is that staying or moving? It stays. So it stays on the bottom. What about x squared? It stays. I put it anywhere down here. I'll put it here at the end. Well, why to the negative third? It's got to go up top. And now z to the fourth, where does that go? It's bottom. It's positive right there, so it stays on the bottom. So, so that is just moving things so that exponents become positive, right? Okay. Now, look at the top. Look at just the top. Are there any like bases up top? No. So the top is not going to simplify any further on its own. The bottom, though, does the bottom have any like bases? Which what, what is the like base on the bottom? Z. So how many Zs do you really have down here? Okay, so Z to the seventh, and then you still got your Y to the fourth, and X squared, right? Okay. I think that's the best order to go through. Make them all positive, and then combine like terms on top, like bases, combine like bases on the bottom. Now what can you do? Because it's all multiplication, so it doesn't matter the order. So 
Yeah. yeah. Because cause, so what is what does X represent? Just a number. So so really, what it could be any number. So I could have like two. So X, let's say, is five. So I've got something like that. That would be the two X to the fourth if X was five. Can I rewrite that as so that number right there would be five times five, which is twenty-five times five again is one twenty-five times five again is six twenty-five, right? Okay. Six twenty-five times two is twelve fifty. Okay. So two times five times five times five times five is twelve fifty. Is is five times five times two times five times five going to be the same thing? Huh? Yeah, because two times three is six, but three times two is six as well, right? So the order that I multiply doesn't matter. So I can I can separate these. Well, I, I just, because the way I was writing it, I, I went through here and I said, okay, three was the first thing. Because I had brought these down, right? So three was the first thing, so I had room there. And I didn't think I had room to put it here, so I just put it down here at the end. Yeah. Are you, yeah, it doesn't matter. But this is all, like, the way this is written, that what, there's implied multiplication in it. That's why I'm multiplying there. So how many, if I look at the X's up here, so, so think about what this really says. And this is where, if you get stuck, if you can remember what exponents really mean to us, it means 2 times X times X times X times X. That's what X to the fourth is, right? Times Y times Y times Y. That's Y to the third. Over 3, Z times Z times Z times Z times Z times Z times Z. That's 7 Z's. Times Y times Y times Y times Y. That's 4 Y's, right? Times X times X. Okay. Are those two X's right there going to cancel with those two X's? So let's cross them out. So I cross those out. Okay. Now, do these three Y's here cancel with these three Y's? So let's cross them out. Okay. And they cancel because the Y over that Y is 1, right? Okay. We have three iterations of that. So how many X's do you have up top left over? So that can be written as 2x squared, right? How many z's on the bottom? 7 z's. And how many y's? Y. So that's the answer. But do you want to write this out like this? That could be a pain in the butt, right? So basically what we do is we say there are like bases on top and the bottom with the x's. So two of the X's on the bottom will cancel with two of the X's on top. Okay. And then we can look at the Y's and say that these are like bases. Okay. And three of the Y's on top will cancel with three of the Y's on the bottom. But because there's more Y's on the bottom, then that Y to the first will stay on the bottom when you're done. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, but it's all, all these rules are based off of this logic right here, of what exponents mean to us. Okay, exponents are repetitive multiplication. Okay, uh, and if you have factors in your numerator that are identical to factors in your denominator, they cancel out because they divide to give you one. Just like these x's, these two x's on top and bottom, and the three y's on top and bottom. Question 27. Question 27. Question 27. Nope. Community property. Like, like 2 times 3. If I say what's 2 times 3, what do you tell me? 6. But can you write that as 3 times 2? So we get 6, right? So because those are the same, that means that these orders don't matter. So 
if I write 4x to the 0, y to the negative 2, z to the third, that's the same thing as saying z to the third, x to the 0 times 4 times y to the negative 2. So this is all multiplication through here. The order does not matter. So you're going to have 4 to the first, right? What's x to the 0? Just 1. Okay. So you put times 1 in there if you want, but you don't need to. Where is this y to the negative 2? What are we going to do with that? Run about. What about the z cubed? We're gonna do that. Top. Uh, there's four x on the bottom that stays there, right? What cancellation do we see that can occur? The fours, right? Those are the same base right there. So you're left with z cubed over x y squared. And then 28. <laughs> Negative exponents here, right? What's going to, what are we going to do with the 2? Keep it. What about the H? Keep it. What's the J in the top? Move it to the bottom, so it becomes J third. What about the K up top? Keep it. Eventually, yes. So I'm just moving things and leaving. That's, I'm, I'm not doing any, like, no, I'm not doing any of my operations. I'm just changing negative exponents to positive exponents. Uh, if you want to do it at the same time, that's fine. Um, so I ran through all those, and that's where they moved to. Now let's go, is it this 3 should stay in the bottom, right? What about that J? Is it stay in the bottom? Or the K? Okay. So this is what you were saying, Jenna, is that this J to the third and J to the first, we're going to rewrite that as j to the fourth. It's like writing the, like, you know, if I had x as my coefficient, or as, as my variable, what's the coefficient? What's the number out front? One. So the same idea happens with the power or the exponent for that. So it's not written as an understood one. So K wasn't written here, so it's an understood first power. So then we have 2H to the third, K to the fourth up top. What's going to, is there anything that cancels here? The K's cancel, right? So how many K's are you left with? Three, and they shouldn't be up top, correct? 